Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am going to show you yet another way to start a crumb block. I've done stuff similar, but I specifically want to show you how you can take a little tiny piece of fabric and quickly make it something big so it's easier to work with. This is not the same as the confetti quilting I did. I'll link to that down below. That was like trying to capture um, a little tiny piece in like fabric that was almost all the same. I have to get back to doing that. But we're just going to take this and kind of do like log cabin style and work around it. And in no time, it's big. Why would you bother doing this? Just because. Just because this is really cute and you might like it in your quilt blocks. A lot of you love doing crumb quilting and I see a lot of pictures. I think some of you don't know how to get the small things in there. You don't have to. You can do all, you know, bigger pieces like, you know, this is, you know, something that's just in my crumb box that I can add to. But, you know, I would probably never use this whole big piece in a crumb block because I like the little stuff, but I can start with big pieces and they get smaller and smaller. See, as they're trimmed, I will still use that edge. I will sew something right next to that and you'll see probably an eighth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch of that strip and I love that. But that's just me. You can do all big pieces or you can for the hell of it if you want to. Start with something tiny just so you can say you did. Here's what you can do. Take the tiny thing. Take something bigger and you're going to sew the tiny thing to the edge of the bigger thing. This is really tiny. It's about three quarters of an inch wide by maybe almost an inch tall. So I'm doing about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. In the real world, you would add more tiny pieces to this and you'd fill this strip. But I'm not doing that for the sake of the video. And just push that back and then trim on one side like this. See we already have something significantly bigger to work with. Now on this straight edge we're going to add something else that's biggish. Let's do a piece of solid brown. I'm going to add that to the strip. Might as well trim that right now. And again, you could fill that whole strip with little pieces like this. Push that back. And you don't have to go around. You can do this side, then this side, or this side, then this side. Do whatever you want, whatever you feel like, whatever works for you. Let's get another bigger piece. Ooh, this is cool and I'm going to do this edge. So I'm going to trim here and let me trim a little wonky. Let's do a little wonky. A little wonkier. You don't have to go wonks. You can do it just straight. Let's do this nice big portion here. Trimming on this side. I only have one more edge to do and that little tiny piece will be fully enclosed. Let's add some of this pink. Anything works. Look at the center. Look at that little tiny piece in there. You know, sometimes we start big and make it look like that and people think, oh, she started with a tiny piece, but you didn't. But this time we did and make sure you tell everybody that was actually a tiny piece that I put in there. And they'll think you're like, uh, you know, just like a genius for being able to sew like that. Let me press this. And I'm not even trimming this at this point. This is the beginning of a crumb block for me. I will most likely, you know, add some fabric maybe here and trim this off because you know, I like stuff to look tiny. Let me show you some of the crumb blocks I've been making because I have been busy with that and I'm putting them on eBay starting at a penny for for uh, you know a penny bid to start free shipping and you know 
they're just cool. I really try hard to make, you know, angles and to include tiny pieces. I love to add selvages. I may start doing some um, embellishing by adding different um, cording on the top or even capturing yarn with a zigzag or some of my shreds. Look at that. Now see, this is kind of big for me, that piece. But it's got something happening in there, so I liked it. And you can put little novelty pieces. Look. And you can still do the top stitching method for salvages if you want. I have started doing top stitching and right sides together. So I mix it up. I just love taking like 10 minutes, you know, which usually ends up being more like 30 minutes, which is good. I do that for myself. And the only reason I put them on eBay is because I don't need them. Now, this is a big piece. Sometimes I get a little tired. My gosh, that looks like a pencil, doesn't it? That's cool. Anyway, sometimes, you know, I just want to be able to trim a block to five inches square, and I'll just throw stuff that's big. I'm not against the big. <gasps> Look at this. This was, uh, I think, part of another tutorial for a scrappy strip quilt block, and I used it in here. This. Oh, I like that. This. I think that's what I have left right now and I'll probably knock out a couple more while I'm sitting here but I just wanted to show you that where is it where is it was that thing I just did is it gone oh no here it is <laughs> I just wanted to show you that we started with a little tiny piece and in no time it was big enough to handle I mean even after adding that first strip it, you know it became easy to work with so give it a try thanks so much for watching Bye.